I'll see you back here in about an hour. Wh well, where do I go? Go right up this hill, and the lab is right on the other side. Walk up this hill? Well, can't you take this puppy, drive it? I can't take that risk. Why is it that some people will take risks and others won't? Kiss my job goodbye, that's why. Have you ever taken a risk? Don't think about it too long. Of course you have. We've all taken risks. It's part of being human, right? Well, research shows that teenagers are more likely than any other segment of the population to take risks. And in fact, research done right here at the NIH shows that a teenage brain is pretty different from an adult brain. But what is it that would make young adults take a risk, possibly losing everything? Well, in this first segment, we'll find out. I'm Mike Osborne, and I'm here in Baltimore City talking about the effects of gambling and how it can affect you. I was the same age as you guys when I started gambling. I developed the addiction around the age of 15. Shooting basketball, playing pool, video games. It, it allowed me to walk through the halls of high school like I was the big shot. I thought it was harmless. I thought I could stop at any time. You know, in high school I learned about alcohol, drugs, safe sex, all that good stuff. No one ever told me about gambling. No one ever told me that it could ruin my life and take everything from me, from my home, my car, my career, my family. I always thought that gambling was cool, it was okay, and it can't be addictive. Gambling and the lore of gambling is all about taking risk. And as kids, we feel like, and I know I felt like, I had nothing to lose. It was worth the risk. But you may not have nothing to lose now, but I'll tell you what, I found on later in life, you got a lot to lose. I started making like $50 football bets on, on a weekend. And by the age of 16 or 17, I'm still betting through this vendor. And I know one given week, I, I ended up being down to him like $4,000. At that point, I had to go to my parents uh, for a bailout because of the fear of uh, what he might do. But after I got out of rehab here the first time at, at 19, I got right back into trouble with a different bookie. They bust through the front door and they held a, a nine millimeter to my wife's head with her holding my newborn baby and told her that if I didn't have the money in a week, they weren't coming back for me, they were coming back for her. Where you been, dog? We've been playing for like an hour. The rush of gambling, when it gets inside of you, is a very addictive trait. Hey, what's going on? Enough is never enough. With me, it got to the point where it wasn't about the money. It was about the next level of success. This was a different craving. It was, uh, I don't know, it, it took me to, to a higher level that, that I'd never felt before. It gets in your body, it gets in your mind, it gets in your soul. The, the highest point of the rush in a gambling addiction is the last two minutes of the football or basketball game. If you're playing Texas Hold'em, the turn of the river. So what you got, man? What you got? Two ten. Aces, kings. Gambling, like many other vices, is a lot of good times. Full house. Part of the addiction is living on the edge. Listen to that. You know, are you going to get caught or are you going to going to make it out of this jam? You're going to pay up. I can't. The bad times outweigh the good. Gambling can take everything from you and eventually lead you to hit rock bottom. I, I honestly thought I was living a nightmare. I was homeless. I lost my family. I didn't talk to my parents for two years because, uh, you know, they let me know how embarrassed they were. Rock bottom for me was when I found myself before the judge being sentenced to a year and a half at jail. It was time to check out. I, I, I couldn't do this anymore. And I honestly felt that the only way out of this was to end my life. I wanted to stop, but I couldn't. <laughs> My name is Dr. Jim Bjork. I'm a researcher at the National Institutes of Health, and I'm interested in your brain. My task is designed to look at how far will you go when you don't have an, a very clear picture of what the risks are, but you know they're out there. I'm interested in why kids get into so much trouble with drugs, alcohol, and gambling, and other things that they can go on to lose control of. And to help us understand the brain, I do what's called functional magnetic resonance imaging. 
my assistant Cinnamon and I have just uh, put a volunteer, Matt, into the scanner. He's going to be doing a game where he can win real money. We're going to see what his brain is doing when he's seeing things in his environment that means he could win money or risk losing it all. Children uh, of parents who have substance ad addiction problems and gambling addiction problems, they're the ones that are at particular risk for having problems themselves and they're the ones whose brains are starting to show some differences. And this is the kind of experiment that will let us find out. If your cerebral cortex is asleep at the switch, just remember to keep on keeping your head still. And here we go. All set? Yep, all set. Over. So right now, Matt is actually playing our special game while we're scanning his brain in real time. And this will help us figure out what parts of the brain are at work, when Matt is seeing something on the screen that says he can win money, or when he sees that he could win money at the risk of losing it all. Some of my research has shown that part of the brain that translates incentives into action isn't quite as developed as an adult. Yep, he's going for it. He's going for the big money. Is he going to get burnt? Oh, he busted. Gambling addiction science is telling us has a lot of the same brain things going wrong as being addicted to alcohol and drugs. We're not saying don't do this stuff because we don't want you to have fun or because we're trying to oppress you. It's because this is bad. The science tells us it's bad. We just need you to hold on because better things are ahead if you can make the right decision. There was never any peace of mind. It's a lonely place, number one, and it's a deep place. I was always willing to get in the ring and give it a go, but it always beat me. It was a mental hell, and that's a place I don't want to go back.